understand kickboxing was invented there, and they're the best at it. Oh, really? Kid, book us a flight to Taiwan first. Thank God. One person crazy enough to put you in a ring with a tongue, <laughs> Name Zen. Lives out in the six. May I help you? How do you know him? I asked him to uh, teach me Muay Thai. <laughs> and Uncle Zen's going to teach you. My uncle does not teach anyone anymore. You fight before? Yeah. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Train different in America. Your defense stinks. You must learn to be faster than any punch or kick. I can beat Tom Paul. I'll win that fight for you. In April of 1989, Kickboxer made its debut in Germany and throughout the next few months made its way across the world and grossed about $15 million in the United States alone. It was shot over 50 days in Thailand between June and August of 1988 on a very small budget of $1.5 million, so its profit margins were extremely good and proved, like many Van Damme films, very successful on home video. In some territories it was called Karate Tiger 3, which makes no sense. The film was produced by King's Road Entertainment, which also produced Enemy Mine and a series of low-budget movies. Canon Films didn't finance the movie, but only distributed it in the USA. Many mistakenly attribute Kickboxer to a Canon film because of the close release of Cyborg, which also starred Van Damme. Kickboxer was directed by Mark DeSalle and David Wirth. Mark also produced Bloodsport and Death Warrant. He makes a cameo in Bloodsport near the beginning with the character Jackson, and in Kickboxer he turns up as one of the reporters. Jean-Claude Van Damme, hot off the success of Bloodsport, plays Kurt Sloan. Van Damme takes on the extra roles of fight choreographer and shares story credit with the director. Jean-Claude wowed audiences with his flexibility and makes great use of his now famous spin kick throughout the film. Kurt's backstory does mirror Van Damme's own personal life where he mentions he studied ballet and karate. Dennis Alexio stars as Eric Sloan. Dennis was a champion of American kickboxing, taking part in lightweight and heavyweight competitions. He had competed throughout the 80s and 90s, winning many matches. Acting-wise, his career never took off. I didn't realise till recently his voice was dubbed. In a rare deleted scene, Kurt visits Eric in hospital. This deleted scene may have been on some early rental copies, or possibly an extended TV broadcast. But in this scene, you can hear Dennis's real voice. Look at me. They're dead. In six months, they'll be goddamn toothpicks. Lifeless, fucking worthless toothpicks. You can tell why they chose to dub him. I don't think his voice is strong enough, and the delivery of his lines clearly indicate his lack of acting. This scene is actually pretty important for Eric. He shows his frustration with his inability to walk and wants Kurt to get revenge. Michelle Kesey plays Tong Po. Now in the end credits, he is credited as Tong Po as himself. That obviously isn't his real name. I'm not sure why they chose not to credit Michelle. They made him up to look more oriental. So maybe to not offend people, they chose not to credit him with his real name. Who knows? Michelle had been a friend of Jean-Claude's for years. 
and they both travelled to Hollywood together to seek out a career in acting. They both turned up in Breakin. If you look closely in the background, you can see them together. Michelle was also a martial artist and got a part in Bloodsport. Michelle was Van Damme's personal trainer on Kickboxer, and when he heard the production was looking to cast someone as Tong Po, with Michelle having a knowledge of Muay Thai martial arts and being very tall, he went for the part and got it. Dennis Chan plays Yan Chow, who trains Kurt in Mu Thai. I don't think Dennis was a martial artist because a lot of the scenes where he performs a technique are shot from a distance and it looks very much like a double. He trains Kurt in the old style and helps him get in touch with his spiritual side to make him a better warrior. Haskell Anderson plays Winston Taylor. Like many action films from the 80s, there's always an ex-Special Forces guy or someone who fought in Vietnam. He comes to the aid of Kurt and Eric and introduces Kurt to Zian. The plot to the movie is very basic and not that taxing, but also follows similar plot beats to Bloodsport. Kurt Sloan is the brother of Eric, the American kickboxing champion. Kurt is his corner man and part-time manager. Eric is undefeated and learns that kickboxing was invented in Thailand, where the press claim they are the best at it. Kurt and Eric travel to Bangkok to challenge the best fighter, Tong Po. Before fighting, they do a bit of sightseeing and it ends up being one of the most unintentionally gay sequences on film. It gives Top Gun a run for its money. As Eric prepares for the match, Kurt goes to find some ice and encounters Tong Po preparing for battle by kicking in a pillar. Kurt is shocked at the sheer strength of Tong Po and warns his brother not to fight him, but with Eric's swollen ego, he ignores his brother's warnings and jumps into the ring. In the first round, Eric gets his ass handed to him as he struggles to do any damage to Tong Po. Unwilling to give up, Eric returns for the second round and continues to take a vicious beating, finally prompting Kurt to throw in the towel. Tong Po ignores him and as Eric struggles to get up, Tong Po elbows him in the spine, paralyzing him from the waist down. Eric is carried outside and left on the street without any help, until Winston, a retired American Special Forces member, intervenes and agrees to take the brothers to a local hospital. Kurt is heartbroken and shocked by his brother's condition and wants revenge on Tong Po, but Winston says Kurt isn't good enough to fight him in the ring. Kurt wanders around Thailand thinking about what he can do. There is a similar scene to this in Bloodsport, when his friend Jackson is defeated by Chang Lee. Van Dam wanders around Hong Kong to collect his thoughts. Kurt bumps into Winston outside a Muay Thai school. Winston tells him about Xian Chao. Upon locating him, Kurt is able to convince him to train him in the art of Muay Thai after explaining what happened to his brother and his need for revenge. Zian warns him revenge is a dangerous motive, but Kirk argues it's a powerful one. The local gangsters who manage Tong Po catch on that Zian is training Kurt, and they begin to get worried, preparing themselves for the inevitable battle. Herzog composes the music for Kickboxer. He'd previously worked on Bloodsport, which the soundtrack has become a cult favourite among fans. Now getting hold of soundtracks to Van Damme films has always been a bit of a challenge because of the low budget nature of many of his early feature films. A soundtrack was never given a release. For collectors, there is a three volume collection produced featuring a collection of music from some of his films, but luckily Paul Herzog's work for Bloodsport and Kickboxer were given a proper release on CD. The score itself is pretty effective in setting the mood and the scenes and generally works best during the training montage and action sequences. Some of the tracks are pretty forgettable but the good outweighs the bad. For the small budget the composer has done a very good job and like many 80s flicks the music is all done with synthesizers so I'm very happy. Singer Stan Bush provides three songs for the film, Streets of Siam, Fight for Love and Never Surrender. I don't think any of these songs are as good as Fight to Survive from Bloodsport, which Stan Bush also did. To be honest, the best song from Kickboxer is Feeling So Good Today, which features in the bar, when Van Damme breaks out some show-stopping dance moves. I'd definitely strut my stuff on the dance floor if they play this tune in a club. The soundtrack to Kickboxer has been released a couple of times over the years. Early this year it was released on CD and available now on Amazon in complete form. I just recently purchased the soundtrack for £8 and the quality is fantastic. Definitely seek it out if you love the score and of course the cheesy rock music. From 1991 to 95, Kickboxer got four sequels and none of them starred John claude Instead of focusing on Kurt for Kickboxer 2 to 4, they focus on his brother David who I might add was never mentioned in the first film. Kickboxer 2 was written by David S. Goya and directed by Albert Pion, who also directed Kickboxer 4. Kickboxer 2 and 3 see Dennis Chan return to the role of Xian, 
this time to train David, and Michelle Kesey returns as Tong Po. The movie was heavily criticised for the use of slow motion. Pretty much all the fights are in slow motion, which gets boring very quickly. I can imagine if there was less slow mo, the film would only be 60 minutes long. Kickboxer 3 had the character battling a bunch of thugs who run a slavery ring. His friend is kidnapped and he's forced to fight. In Kickboxer 4, Tong Po returns again. This guy won't give up, will he? But played by a different actor, and the added makeup looks awful. The film was slated by fans who hated it and found the plot stupid, with many suggesting it was the worst of the series. The movie includes footage of the first film as a flashback. The funny thing is, the Laserdisc release credits Van Damme on the cover and includes a shot of him from the movie AWOL, also known as Lionheart. Kickboxer 5 was a direct video release like number 4. The only redeeming feature of this film is that it stars Mark Dacascus as Matt Reeves, who is a great martial artist. He has to avenge the death of David, who was killed off camera because the actor Sasha Mitchell didn't return and he only notices his death in the paper. There are some cool fight scenes but they are mostly poorly covered by the director. Mark's strengths as a martial artist are often wasted. To be honest, I'd avoid all these sequels. Maybe if you want to have a laugh and you enjoy crappy B-movies, then you may get some fun out of them, but only if you are a hardcore fan. Kickbox is one of those movies that first introduced Jean-Claude Van Damme to many people. For me, this and Death Warrant were those early titles I saw late at night on TV. Bloodsport made him a superstar, but I didn't see that until the mid-90s, only discovering it randomly on VHS, and I'd never heard of it. So Kickboxer was that movie that I watched repeatedly as a child. Its story is very simple and straightforward. There isn't anything particularly original about it. It's a basic revenge story mixed with some similar inspirational moments like the Karate Kid on Rocky. As a kid, I loved the fighting and training montage sequences, but when you compare it to other movies in Van Damme's vast catalogue of action flicks, it's a bit weak in places. The training scenes are very much tailored to Van Damme's flexibility. Loads of shots of him doing the splits and his famous spinning kick. He's supposed to be training in Muay Thai, but he doesn't appear to fight in that style at all, even by the end. He may do the odd attack with his knee, but just generally uses high flying kicks and punch attacks. Why do his legs need to be stretched apart and have a ball dropped on his stomach from a great height? I know it's supposed to be a sort of conditioning to strengthen his muscles, but in reality it doesn't really make much sense. All the fight scenes are choreographed by Jean-Claude himself, and I believe it's the first movie where he had full control of the fight scenes. But I think it would have been wiser to have another expert involved, because it does lack a lot of the excitement and speed of, say, Bloodsport. I think Van Damme is far more impressive in that film than in this. However, in terms of acting, I think Jean-Claude does provide a better effort in Kickboxer. He demonstrates his best stuff when he encounters Zian and he's hanging upside down. Some of his early performances in this film, say when he is with his brother, are very forgettable to say the least. Throughout the film, he generally takes out his enemies with just a kick or a punch. To be honest, you can see that in any other martial arts film. When he gets in the ring in the build-up to challenge Tong Po, it just ends up being a kicking match with no real inventiveness to the fights. Actually, it feels just like the scene in Bloodsport where he repeatedly kicks the guy and wins by sheer endurance. As a kid, I loved all this stuff, but once you've seen a Jackie Chan fight, especially in something like City Hunter, I wanted more from Van Damme fight scenes. I wanted close combat fighting with a different combination of moves, heavy blocking and counter attacks. In the movie Knock Off, which isn't particularly a good film, Van Damme shows far more speed and variety with his fighting style. Actually, I think the movie Lionheart has more enjoyable fight scenes. The action scenes also rely on the repeated edit of an attack, so one kick would equal three hits. They just quickly repeat the frames from different angles, which also happens a lot in Cyborg. It's a very cheap way to extend a fight or to make it look more impressive. Kickboxer is certainly a better looking film than, say, Bloodsport. It has the novelty of using Thailand's amazing architecture and uses more locations instead of being set in a tournament ring. There are nice moments where Van Damme is training with the sun setting in the background and the look of the underground ring is nicely covered and lit. The introduction of Tong Po is played out really well, with Kirk's attention being attracted by the scary echoing noise of Po attacking the beam. For me as a kid at the time playing Street Fighter 2, I just imagined the character Sagat being based on Tong Po. Kurt even visits the famous Sleeping Buddha statue, which is featured in the level of Sagat. As a kid, you let your imagination get the best of you. The dancing scene is probably the funniest moment in Van Damme's career. 
After a few drinks with his master, he is coaxed into dancing with two girls. This moment is cringeworthy and hilarious at the same time. It kind of just comes out of nowhere and seems to take away the serious tone the film is trying to make. Van Damme's dancing is like watching a drunken uncle at a wedding. The end battle always cracks me up. Van Damme is losing the fight, the crowd start cheering Noksu Kao, which means the white warrior, and his brother turns up to give Kurt his support. The encouragement gives him a greater confidence, but then he gets Mai Lee to cut off his gloves, and suddenly Tong Po becomes an incompetent fighter and starts losing for no reason. Other than Van Damme having no padding on his hands, Tong Po just ends up standing there as Kurt beats the crap out of him. The build up to the fight where they push their hands into the glass was always a cool scene and obviously hit a note with audiences at the time because when Hot Shots Part 2 arrived, they nicely spoofed it. There are now reports of Van Damme starring in a remake which is intended to be released next year. There have always been rumours floating around about a remake of Bloodsport, which has never happened. I'm always dubious about these announced remakes because it never really happens when it comes to Van Damme's back catalogue of movies. But I'm all for it if it does. I'm sure we'll get some better fight scenes, but it will be missing the super cheesy music which gives the original its charm. Van Damme kind of remade Kickboxer in 1996 with The Quest, which had elements of Bloodsport and Kickboxer, but it proved to be a commercial failure. It's a movie I've revisited a few times to give it another chance, but it never delivers. It's nicely directed by Van Damme and the photography is very impressive, but the fight scenes really fail to provide anything exciting and it's all very predictable. I think it arrived too late and audiences wanted more from tournament based movies or were just bored of them. You've seen it all before in the quest and unfortunately there are no surprises. Kickboxer is certainly a movie that isn't going to be remembered for its high quality of acting and writing. With its heavy use of power ballers provided by Stan Bush, it does afford the movie to a heavy waft of cheese and does provide some unintentional laughs, especially in the slow motion fight scenes where Van Damme pulls some funny faces. The movie is available on Blu-ray, the picture quality is stacks better than the old crusty home videotapes and it's pretty cheap to obtain, so definitely pick it up. I think if you watch this with a group of friends you will find it really funny but thoroughly entertaining at the same time. I suppose it's classic Van Damme schlock. There are some out there who can't stand it and people like me who love this sort of stuff. What's going on? Message from Freddie Lee. Why is he dressed like that? He's wearing the traditional robes of a messenger sent to bring news of a fight. Now called Tandung again. She better to Tandung. It says we will fight the old ways. Hands wrapped in hemp and resin. Deeply fucking black. Bullshit! If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can find more retrospective reviews by clicking on these videos. If you want to watch my upcoming reviews early before they go live on YouTube, you can support me through Patreon.
Don't forget the poster designed by my talented artist Peter Bruce, celebrating 100 retrospectives, is still available to purchase. We ship worldwide and postage is affordable.